Welcome to the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance's 2020 topic based video series. In this series, we'll review basic concepts and ideas pertinent not only to engineers new to short span steel bridge design, but those looking for a refresher of fundamental concepts. This video is part of a two part series focused on eSpan 140, a complementary web based resource for preliminary design of short span steel bridges. The goals of this video will be to provide a background on the development of eSpan 140 as well as some of the context behind the solutions it reports. While the focus of this video series is as a refresher of basic bridge engineering concepts for new engineers and those looking for uh, uh, The goals of this video will be to provide a background on the development of eSpan 140 as well as some context behind the solutions it reports. Keep in mind that while this video series is meant to serve as a refresher and introduction to basic bridge engineering of short span steel structures, the context and background of eSpan 140 provide some very good guidance for beginning a short span steel bridge design project as will become clear throughout this video. We'll review some of the background and design assumptions that went into the standards behind, uh, that East. We will begin by reviewing some of the background and design assumptions that were used in generating the standards that ESPAN 140 utilizes, and then review some sample design comparisons and some of the output that was generated from the design studies. A little bit of background and motivation on this project. Um, the Bridge Technology Center has spent uh, arguably the past uh, 12 to 13 years traveling across the country training bridge engineers, county engineers, DOTs, owner agencies uh, on short span steel bridge design. What we found is that most bridge engineers are well trained on the use of short span concrete bridges. In fact, over 80% of the short span bridges in the country are made of concrete. However, many state DOT and county engineers are, are simply not educated or familiar with short span steel bridge design. Uh, steel bridges are perceived to be too complex, uh, somewhat like a Swiss watch, and as a result are perceived to be too expensive. The Bridge Technology Center, over a three-year industry-wide effort, developed a series of standard designs for short span steel bridges and the result was a series of simple practical designs that can be used for a wide variety of projects. These standards include quite a bit of data from plate sizes and stud spacings to diaphragm spacings, deck reinforcements, uh, and, and basically any component of a bridge superstructure from the bearing to the deck surface. To access these standards, the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance has provided eSpan 140, a free web-based tool that users can use to define a given project and generate a customized solutions book for your given project. To begin the discussion of eSpan 140, we'll first talk about the standards that eSpan 140 utilizes. The goals in developing these standards were to de uh, develop economically competitive uh, designs, that expedite and economize the design process, and result in simple, repetitive details and member sizes. To achieve this effort, girders were designed for span lengths from 40 feet to 140 feet in 5 foot increments. For each of these increments, four different girder spacings were utilized, 6 foot, 7.5 foot, 9 foot, and 10.5 foot. For a given specific project, eSpan will round both the span length and the girder spacing up to the next increment and report that solution as a conservative option for your given project. For each of these different increments, the entire superstructure was designed from the steel girders to the shear stud and stiffener layouts, a series of welding and fabrication details are provided, elastomeric bearing pads are designed, as well as a rudimentary concrete deck design uh, reinforcement layout is provided. The primary value of eSpan 140 is as a preliminary design and estimating tool. As you'll see in part two, you have the ability to produce a valid steel bridge design in minutes. You can then take that design, contact a fabricator or 
producer or member from the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance Association database uh, and obtain a cost estimate for direct comparison with a concrete alternative. You can then take that design and further optimize it for your given project. Now for each of those different iterations, four different girders were designed. Two plate girder options, uh, one being a homogeneous plate girder that utilizes 50 KSI seal throughout, another being a hybrid option that utilizes 50 KSI top flanges and webs, but 70 KSI bottom flanges. There were also two rolled beam options that were generated, one being the lightest weight, which just utilizes the lightest rolled beam section that can safely resist the, the the loads provided, as well as a limited depth option. The limited depth is designed to meet a target L over D of around 25 for any situations where you have clearance issues or hydraulic opening requirements. In addition, the girders were designed to uh, accommodate commonly stockpiled plate thicknesses and rolled beam sizes to ensure uh, design solutions were readily available. Some more on the design assumptions, and these design assumptions would be very in step with the typical design assumptions used in short span steel bridge design. Uh, we assumed a stay in place unit weight of 15 pounds per square foot and a future wearing surface of 25 pounds per square foot. We assumed concrete jersey, jersey barriers as the traffic control, uh, and we assumed that weight to be 520 pounds per foot. Uh, to account for the bolts, the studs, and any other miscellaneous steel, we increase the weight of the uh, raw steel girder by 5%. We assume 4 KSI uh, compressive strength of our concrete uh, with a unit weight of 150 pounds per cubic foot. We also assumed a 2 inch haunch that you can see in the image on the top right, as well as a constant flange width and a constant web height. In another video, we discussed uh, suggested fabrication practices, and this falls in line with economic fabrication practices for short span steel bridges. Each of the girders were designed according to AASHTO LRFD specifications, strength one, service two, fatigue, constructability limit states were all assessed, as well as the L over 800 live load deflection limit. HL93 vehicular live loading was used throughout the design process. Now, in order to ensure that the designs that were being reported by eSpan were efficient uh, and made sense, we performed a series of weight comparisons looking at different uh, given girder spacings. For example, you can see here in this graph, on the x-axis, we're reporting the span length, and on the y-axis, we're reporting the weight of girders measured in tons. As you can see, and as would make sense, as the span length increases, the girder weights increase. But if you pay attention to the given options, you'll see a significant divergence between these two options here, which correspond to the rolled beam solutions, as opposed to these two curves here, which represent the plate girder solutions. At a span length of around 100 feet, you find that the weight options tend to diverge rather significantly. In other words, once you get past 100 or 110 feet, you find that rolled beam solutions don't really offer much significant economy. And this was going back to the er an earlier point made in the beginning of the video. While this video is focused on eSpan 140, a lot of the results of the design studies can guide you as an engineer. When designing a short span bridge, if your span length is going to be on the higher end of the span range, such as a 120 foot bridge or 130 or 140, you're most likely going to want to go with a plate girder option as it's going to result in the most economy. Whereas if you're on the shorter end of this span range, such as a 40 foot bridge, a 50 foot bridge, and what have you, you're probably going to want to go with a rolled beam solution as it's going to generate the most economy. In between, you, both options are provided and it just depends on your given project which is going to be the most cost effective solution. And this goes into what eSpan 140 recommends. Based on these weight comparison studies, the following solutions are recommended and are reported in eSpan, as you'll see in part two of this series. So for example, if you input a specific project uh, that has a span length of 60 feet, um, you will get solutions for both rolled beams and plate girder solutions. 
However, if that span length increases to say 130 feet, you'll find that east span will not generate a rolled beam solution because as was found in the previous slide, rolled beams are not efficient and economical for span lengths of that magnitude. Similarly, if you input a very short span length, such as 40 feet, you won't get a plate girder solution. Those design uh, uh, guidances and, and, and observations, while specific to E-SPAN, can also form general guidance for you as a bridge engineer. These ranges are very useful guides for you as an engineer when designing a given short span steel bridge. This concludes part one of the two-part series on eSpan 140. In the next video, we'll go through the eSpan uh, 140 process by not only reviewing a, uh, the parameters regarding a typical example project, but we'll also go through a live demonstration and a timed demonstration of eSpan 140 and review the resulting output. We hope this video has been informative and we thank you for your time.